Welcome to another evening of Frank Conversation here on Hard Copy, coming to you from our studios in Abuja. I'm Maupe Ogun Yusuf. We're still in the aftermath of the recently concluded elections, distilling lessons and looking for ways to forge ahead. One of the states where there was plenty of jubilation after a winner was announced post-election was Abia State. Initially, there were fears that results were going to be altered when INEC withheld further compilation of results in Obingwa, local government area of the state. It led to many tension-soaked moments between the PDP and the candidate of the Labour Party in the state, Mr. Alex Oti, who was eventually declared winner by INEC. In those moments... While candidates and coalition officers were on edge, one of the chieftains of the All Progressives Congress in the state was quite confident that the INEC returning officer would do the right thing. One significant thing that has happened here is the quality of the person who is leading the charge here. The woman is fearless, she's great, and has been consistent since this whole process started. Mary Ikoku is a member of the All Progressives Congress and was at the INEC Coalition Center in Umuahia that day. And in an interview with the press during those moments, she expressed confidence that the INEC returning officer, Professor Nena Oti, would do the right thing. Mary is no stranger to politics, having been a canvasser and strategist for a candidate on the platform of the All Progressives Grand Alliance before joining the APC where she aspired to represent Arutruku or Hafia Federal Constituency. She didn't get the ticket. She joins me tonight on Hard Copy to review some of the lessons from these elections and the way forward. Mary, thank you so much for coming on Hard Copy. Thanks for having me. And how, what a coincidence. Yes, well, what were yellow? <laughs> yellow. <laughs> it's a yellow day. <laughs> it's a yellow day, I guess. Yeah. Well, very interesting times. You know, while preparing for this interview, mm -hmm. uh, even though I have known you for quite a while now, um, mm -hmm. you know, since when you were canvassing for the candidate um, of APGA in, I think, was it the 2015 yeah. elections? Yes. Um, I, I am just wondering, I mean, I was, I was listening to one of the interviews you granted you know, in the past, and you said the 2023 elections was going to hold a lot of surprises. Um, I'm just wondering, what would you say was one of the biggest surprises that you witnessed in the 2023 elections? Yeah, I had uh, projected that earlier because I saw how people were no longer interested in voting for political parties. I saw that the coming election at that time uh, was not going to be the regular election. That's why I said there would be a lot of surprises. Being that uh, it was something I thought it was going to be a buffet election. In the sense a that... A buffet election? Yes, absolutely. That, that was what I called it. Because I knew that, for, I mean, voices from the street, you could tell, somebody tells you, oh, I'll vote uh, APC for uh, president. I'll vote this person labor for governor or I'll vote uh, PDP for House of Reps. And I, so people were making up their minds on how they want to vote. They were, you know, I mean, these are conversations around. So I called it, I thought it was going to be a buffet election. It was, it afforded us that, uh, you know, opportunity to mm -hmm. exercise. If there's one time that Nigerians have been able to exercise their franchise on their own terms, mm -hmm. It will be this 2023 election. Interesting. Well, I, I, I can't disagree with you, even though I haven't quite heard the term buffet before. <laughs> uh, but you have seen in the aftermath of the elections, presidential elections, heavily contentious. Parties are currently in court as we speak. Mm -hmm. um, and you um, ran or you tried to run on the platform of the APC in, yeah. your, in your state. You didn't get the ticket. Uh, so it, it was difficult for you. But I'm wondering, uh, when you look at how matters have played out, Mm -hmm. in, in, you know, in the general elections. Um, would you say that your own, for you personally, would you say that you miscalculated when you joined the APC? That's an interesting question, mm -hmm. way. I wouldn't say that I miscalculated. One is that I am from Abia State. APC will be the first political party I've, I've ever stepped forward to you know, put down my name and say, this is my party. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a, a miscalculation in any way. One, it was clear to me that I wasn't going to join PDP. 
There are two big parties. As a person, I don't even play small. So if I'm going into politics, it's going to be any of the leading political parties. And at this time, it was PDP and APC. There was no labor, right? So, Labour Party has always been in existence. Yeah, but it, it wasn't was a, in this form yes, at that it, time. It was a small party. It was a small party at that time. You, so you it didn't think you could have made it big in your own area? Just no, thing. no, because uh, my state was uh, is a PDP state, rather. And um, PDP has held down the state. It was like an entrenched evil system. So because I do not have, um, you know, somebody from the PDP here, I'm going to just, you know, have you stay with, you know, some of the issues uh, which we have raised. Um, you did not join the APC and you had your reasons, perhaps because of what had happened uh, within the PDP in your, in your state. I mean, all politics is local, as they say. Right. But we saw the emergence of Labour Party. Mm -hmm. um, and we saw, as you said, it did not exist, not in the, in the manner that it did. Uh, prior to the 2023 right. elections, but we saw how uh, Peter Obi came and energized that party, and you know it took the not just the southeast, it took you know a large part of the country by storm. I mean, 6.1 million votes in uh, presidential elections of, is, is no joke. So I am just wondering, do you think that looking at what happened, particularly in the southeast, and uh, looking at that wave? Uh, do you think that, you know, with benefit of hindsight, maybe you should have been a member of Labour Party? Just wondering. No. No. I'm in APC and I have no regrets being in APC. And I'll tell you why. There were attempts for me to join Labour Party. I had also, I also realized that all the political parties are the same. And in my states, in all the political parties are the same. I can so bet when that. you describe PDP in those terms, when you say it was a retrogressive, uh, a repressive... In my states. And yes. I did say they may do well in other states. Yes. Y y right? Yes, but when you say they so are they're the same... So they're all the same yeah. in the sense that you don't quite fully have internal democracy in most of the political parties, including my own party. That's the APC. Yes. Okay. So if you look at Labour Party... I've also seen in my state, there are people in Labour Party that I know I met in 2015 during that election. And I knew the role they played, which were very off-color kind of characters. They are now in Labour Party. So in all the political parties, you have the good, the bad, and the ugly. And my reason for sticking with APC um, is because... You see, all of these parties, you actually have more problems with the smaller parties. They are more complicated. And then all you need to do in whatever party you belong to is to continue to be consistent in your values, continue to demand for good governance, continue to demand that you get internal democracy, that the right things are done. And I went to APC for obvious reasons. Right? What's the obvious reason? I didn't want to be part of PDP in my state. Mm. Did, and I've also read... Did, did you feel a bit of pressure? Because in 2015, I, I know that you supported uh, the candidacy of uh, now governor-elect, yeah. um, Mr. Alex Oti, who was mm. running on the platform of APGA then. Mm. Um, you weren't a member of APGA, but no. you, you, know, you canvassed for him. So I'm just wondering if you felt torn as a member of the APC and seeing that... You know, Mr. Oti is now on the platform of Labour Party. You know, how did you think you're going to balance that? Were you still going to be supporting your party wholly? Or did you think, uh, you know, this person, I know him, I, I have supported him in the past, even though we're not in the same party? How difficult was that for you? It wasn't difficult. But in hindsight, you need to understand that I went to APC not alone. Even Dr. Alex Oti was in APT only last APC only last night. When, <laughs> last night when it was to, when it was clear, I mean, just speaking in terms of just only yesterday, because it was only during the primaries when it was obvious to him that my party wasn't going to give him the ticket that he moved to Labour. Which, of course, I was already a candidate, an aspirant in APC. 
And he moved to Labour with people he also felt he could run for office with in Labour. I had reached out to him even whilst he was in Labour to see after my party didn't get, I didn't get that ticket. I also went to court, by the way. <laughs> so You went to court when yes, you didn't get your ticket? when I didn't get my ticket because I needed to challenge the impunity that was experienced at that time. Okay. We were six aspirants. Five of us were at the um, location for the primaries. One person was missing. And he was the one who got the ticket? Yes. So I went to court. I sued him. I sued the party. And uh, I sued INEC. So, I mean, that's... The matter uh, is still in court, as we speak? No, every court uh, pre-election matter has been, resolved. been concluded before the election. And uh, my opponent, the one who had the ticket, unfortunately, didn't also win the election. Right? I even had to ask... So you feel satisfied? I'm very, very I can okay. take it for granted that you didn't vote for APC in that particular, for that particular seat. For which particular seat? For Arochuku or, or Hafia constituency. Did you? Did for Arochuku or Hafia federal constituency? Yes. No, I voted. I voted. I will vote my party. You, regardless of how you felt? No. See, let me tell you. There's no, <laughs> there's no. So who was I going to vote for? You have said that in every party there is the good, the bad, and the ugly. But, yeah. I mean, you know, APC in the Southeast uh, would have had a hard time. In fact, they, it would seem that um, generally the feeling of the, South, of the Southeast with the, you know, with the government at the center has been somewhat strained. Some of it, you know, occasioned by the president's statement, the 95% versus mm -hmm. 3%, the emergence of I, IPOB in the Southeast, et cetera, and how that situation has been handled. Um, for you, how would you say that your party is currently perceived in the Southeast? You've already summed it up. In the Southeast, my party, um, like you said, is a hard sell, right? But there's something you can never take away from APC. APC is one political party that have consistently done uh, membership drive every year. And in the Southeast, they have so many members, registered members of APC. So there's no how much, how bad it will get mm -hmm. that their own party members will not stand up for the party. Did you, feel, did you feel in any way outnumbered? I mean, did you feel in any way, especially during the presidential elections, did you feel a sense of, you know, I don't want to say betrayal, but did you have that feeling from people around you knowing that you are a card-carrying member of this particular political party? You know, they say every politics is local. Yes. So in the Southeast, during that election, it looked, it appeared as if, this is where everyone was going. But it didn't stop my party from picking the votes. Chunks of votes here and there. In fact, it, during the primary, uh, presidential election, it became very obvious to me that one party Abia citizens didn't want was PDP. Because it was right there from the polling units. I monitored over 15 polling units in our Chuku local government during the presidential election. And while LP was taking most of the votes, the next party was APC. So APC was coming second, trailing behind Labour in almost all the 15 polling units that I went to. PDP was getting zero votes. Mm. So it was clear to me at that point that the one party, my state, and of course for obvious reason, of they've been with this party since 1999, and they can't really say this is how much good we've that have come out of it. So that that was the situation. So you could see, and in the southeast, it wasn't very like what you experienced in Lagos, where you say they are using talks. There were also parts of the southeast where they were using machetes to scare people. They would tell you. Don't come here if you're not voting Labour. But that didn't happen in your own constituency. It didn't happen in my own constituency because all the places in my constituency was very peaceful. Um, it was orderly. So I can only report uh, my constituency. But I also had my party uh, members who were agents who also brought uh, reports from their 
various polling units. Well, let's talk about your aspiration, which didn't quite pan out. You've said you uh, went to court. and I'm just wondering which one would have hurt you more. I mean, the fact that you lost out at the primary <laughs> level or the fact that if you had gone to the polls, maybe you'd have been swept away uh, with the <laughs> Labour Party wind. I'm just wondering which one would have hurt you more? It would have... I hate to have regrets. Okay. So you also have a situation where after all that happened during the primaries... A primary is where there are a total of 110 delegates to vie for and, and six people looking for votes from these 110 delegates. And I came to that election with 60 delegates confirmed. So you already know you are the winner of that primary. And whatever happened, happened. But for some of us who come to this politics with a lot of democratic ideals. You also need to, it may, it may not be easy, but you need to do things right and demand that things are done right by your party. Mm. You know, sometimes I see my party say, ah, madam, you can't bring activism inside party. You know, <laughs> and I tell them, let's do things right. The only reason I would have had a regret is after the election, I may start saying, oh, I wish I had gone to court. But right now, I don't have such a regret. So you have no regrets on, have no on, regret. on that particular level? So I followed level. it to a logical conclusion. Okay. So there's no, nothing left behind that I could have said, ah, I wish I had done this. So in my next election, I already know what to do. You will go again? Yes. Okay. That's very interesting. And it's, it's heartwarming to know that you've not been discouraged. No, not at uh, all. The reason I, I say this, because we see the number of women that have now finally emerged. Now that the, you know, the, the air is clear and the dust is settling down, we see that you know, we have only three women confirmed in the Senate. Senate. The House of Reps is not really faring any better. You have to ask if political parties you know, took women seriously in spite of all the hue and cry at the gates of the National Assembly uh, you know, when uh, the gender bill were thrown away or thrown out. I'm wondering, do you think that political parties are taking these uh, agitations from women groups and from women in general seriously? Um, let's start with your own party. Do I think uh, the, the political parties are taking the women seriously? You know, <laughs> this is an interesting question, but for my party, They've done a couple of things that will make it seem as if they have the interest of women at heart. Um, but at the end, because you can see that APC is the only party with a strong, that have given one woman candidacy, which is looking very bright for women. If Adamawa happens, they will make uh, history as the party to produce the first elected female governor. That is a big if. A big if, yeah. Well, it's if, if, if. Then uh, beyond that, there were also women who emerged. Um, but on overall, I wouldn't score them high in terms of women inclusion. Um, in fact, it's across all the political parties failed Nigerian women. And you can also remember that my run for office was from protest ground to run for office. Uh, while we were protesting the five gender bills that were, you know, um, that were cancelled or rejected flagrantly by by. The, the Ninth National Assembly. And I will say that the Ninth National Assembly is the worst National Assembly in the history of Nigeria that chose the first day of March, a month meant for women, the Women's History Month. The way they welcomed Nigerian women into that month was by dishing out that kind of hard blow on us. This is regardless of the fact that this Ninth National Assembly is led by members of the APC, which you belong to? The National Assembly, yes, it has majority of APC members. And remember, like I said earlier, that all the political parties failed Nigerian women. But APC has a greater chance 
of solving this in the sense that APC was the first party to, you know, institute or create a women campaign council for their presidential election. We had the women presidential campaign council. Okay. Made of over 1,000 women in the campaign council. I see that you're about to absolve them somewhat now. <laughs> you know not I'm meaning to absolve them, but yes. overall, yes. all the parties did not do well okay. for the women. Yeah. Right? No, I, I can't even absorb my party in this. Well, why, why, why should I? Mm. So at the end of the day, it is my hope that all political parties will do things right going forward. And you know that women all over across the country have been agitating. We also take the blame to people who are agitating. It's not enough to agitate and also leave women hanging. Most of them don't even support the women candidates. Most of those agitating? Most women. That's the women voters or women, women within voters. or women within political Before parties? The, women within the political parties are women voters. Two days to the election in my state, I, we held uh, our organization Emerge Women. We had um, a meeting of women voters with women candidates to, to really speak heart to heart, have that conversation with them. And there were a lot of promises. And then you get to the polls was a different ballgame entirely. So I think it would take a whole lot of time. It's not going to be a sprint. Maybe it's a marathon. But the demand side and the supply side have to level up, you know? Because you also have to have a lot of women running for office. And a lot of women who are not just running for office for running sake, but running for office to win the election. And not running because you're a woman but because you have competences okay. and you have things to deliver. So well, parties shouldn't just field women because they're women. You've talked about, you know, women doing all parties doing the right thing. And one of the things that you said during uh, the interview, now our correspondent caught up with you at the Coalition Center, you were quite confident that Professor Nina Oti was going to do the right thing. How did you know that? Because she's a woman. And I know that... Women always do the right thing? I know that women... When it comes to, when you are faced with that, that time to make that tough decision, women are more likely to damn the consequences and do things right. I'm a woman. I know what I can do. And I am judging prof based on, you know, you judge people based on your own character. So I knew, I watched her, I heard her speak. And each time she said, she will not, she will not, and she will never do anything that will rob the people of their mandate. She was consistent. What would be my reason not to believe her? And because I, I saw, I mean, what we've experienced in Abia, is similar to what was experienced in Enugu. It's a, a tale of two professors. But you could tell how Enugu went. The, the professor in Enugu said, I had to take uh, 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 directives from INEC. The woman in Abia was also saying, I've spoken to this person, INEC has spoken to me, I will do things right. Th those two have been well, well reported. So you can play back your videos for Enugu and for Abia. And you could tell. Women bring fresh pair of eyes to any job you give to them. And that's why if we need this country to develop, we must invest in women. We must begin to see how women are mainstreamed in our politics, in our leadership, in our appointive positions and elective positions, not because they are women, but because we need to develop the country. It's a key development in index that you must run an inclusive government.
Mary Ikoko, thank you for coming on Hard Copy. Thanks for having me. Okay. Well, that's the program tonight. All feedback are welcome to the handles showing on your screen. Thank you for watching. I'm Maupe Ogun Yusuf. Good night.